Good evening, visitors, and welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Sharon Bowne, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is Squadron Leader Lee Stanway. Today marks the 79th anniversary of the Battle of Britain, the famous aerial campaign fought in the skies above England during the summer and autumn of 1940. In May 1940, very little stood between Britain and the threat of German invasion. British troops who had been evacuated from Dunkirk were exhausted and much of their equipment had been lost or was unserviceable. To stop Hitler's plans to invade Britain, all that was left was the Royal Air Force. Each day between July and October 1940, British and German aircraft clashed in the skies above England. British coastal radar stations picked up dense formations of German bombers and fighters racing across the English Channel. Fighter command scrambled fighter squadrons of hurricanes and spitfires to intercept them. Throughout the day, the skies over Britain were filled with condensation trails as hundreds of British and German aircraft locked in fierce aerial combat. Though the ordeal of the Blitz on Britain's cities continued into 1941, the pilots and aircrew of the RAF had forestalled a seaborne invasion of southern England. 35 Australians flew combat operations during the Battle of Britain of whom 10 were killed in action. They were among the airmen immortalised by British Prime Minister Winston Churchill in his powerful tribute to the men of Fighter Command. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. In tonight's last post ceremony, we will tell the story of one of the Australian airmen who fought in the skies above England. We are honoured to acknowledge Major General Muhammad Ashkuzman and students of the National Defence Course, Bangladesh. Air Vice Marshal Timothy Innes, DSC, CSC, Commander Integrated Air Defence System, Royal Australian Air Force, and the accompanying delegation. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors and by students on behalf of the following schools. From New South Wales, Beresfield Public School, Tregeal Public School, and Wairala Public School. From Queensland, Concordia Primary School, Toowoomba, Westside Christian College, Primary Department, Goodna, and St Ambrose's Primary School, Newmarket. Australia's Federation Guard is the tri-service ceremonial unit of the Australian Defence Force. They provide a ceremonial presence at civil and military events and during visits to Australia by foreign dignitaries. The Guard will now dismount the catafalque party from the tomb of the unknown Australian soldier.
you are able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. For those that require a seat, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision to which we remain true is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Reeds and floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Flight Lieutenant Patterson Clarence Hughes. Patterson Hughes, known as Pat, was born on the 19th of September 1917 at Numerella near Cooma in New South Wales, the 11th of 12 children of Patterson and Caroline Hughes. After beginning his schooling at Cooma School District, the Hughes family moved to Sydney where Hughes attended Pittisham Boys Intermediate and Fort Street Boys High Schools. After working briefly as a cost clerk with the jewellers Saunders Limited, in January 1936, he joined the Royal Australian Air Force. A year after enlisting, he took a short service commission in the Royal Air Force and sailed for England. In July 1937, he joined Number 64 Squadron, which operated Hawker Demon and later Bristol Blen Blenheim fighters. While part of the RAF, he refused to exchange his RAAF uniform for that of the RAF. In November 1939, Hughes was promoted to acting flight lieutenant and posted to Number 234 Squadron as a flight commander flying submarine Spitfires. From July 1940, the Royal Air Force fought the Battle of Britain against the German Luftwaffe, which possessed nearly twice the number of aircraft and aircrew as the RAF. Reich Marshal Hermann Göring believed that he could wipe the RAF from the skies in just four weeks. A British and German aircraft clashed. As British and German aircraft clashed in the skies above England, radar stations and airfields were hit by German Stukas, Dorniers and Heinkels, while British Hurricanes and Spitfires were set upon by large sweeps of Messerschmitts. In August 1940, German bombers began striking cities and civilian targets, marking the beginning of what became known as the Blitz. While the vast majority of those who participated in the Battle of Britain were Britons, Members of the Allied countries contributed to the eventual victory over the Luftwaffe. Pilots from New Zealand, Canada, India, South Africa, Rhodesia, Jamaica, the British Mandate of Palestine all flew aerial operations during the battle, as did French, Belgian and Czechoslovakian aircrew. Australians flew combat operations during the Battle of Britain, while others flew during the battle with Bomber Command and Coastal Command. Eight Australians became air racers by shooting down five or more enemy aircraft, and then 10 were killed in action. As the Battle of Britain got underway in July 1940, Patterson Hughes shared in number 234 squadrons first confirmed aerial victories. On the 8th of July, he led three Spitfires, which shot down a lone Yonkers 88. He and his section destroyed another on the 28th. While temporarily detached to help in organising Number 247 Squadron, he took advantage of the break to marry his English fiancée, Kathleen Agnes Broderick, in Cornwall. Returning to his unit in mid-August, Hughes shot down a Messerschmitt's and shared in the dispatch of a second. He followed up on the 16th, 18th and 26th, each time destroying two Messerschmitts. Between mid-August and early September, number 234 squadron shot down 63 enemy aircraft. Hughes was eventually credited with as many as 17 aerial victories. An advocate of closing in for a certain kill, his tactics led to his death on the 7th of September, 1940. During the Luftwaffe's first heavy raids on London, Hughes crashed after the incident involving a Dornier 17 light bomber. The confusion that surrounded the crash remains unsolved. It is unknown whether he collided with the aircraft, was struck by debris from the exploding bomber, or flew into the firing line of a hurricane attacking the same target. While he managed to bail out, his parachute failed to open and his body was found not far from the wreck of his Spitfire. 
Four days after his death, number 234 squadron was moved to a quieter sector. Patterson Hughes was buried in St. James's churchyard in Hull. He was posthumously awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his skill and determination as a flight commander and gallantry in his attacks on the enemy. These awards and Hughes' service medals were donated to the Australian War Memorial in 1990. Patterson Hughes' name is listed on the honour roll on my left, among almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is displayed today beside the pool of reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Flight Lieutenant Patterson Clarence Hughes, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier and the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses, barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. 
but in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you all for visiting the Australian War Memorial and we wish you all a very good evening. Thank you.